Okay, new feature, tear down tidbits. Uh, I'm gonna reach into my junk drawer and pull something and take it apart and just study the interesting bits. Uh, today's victim is a D-Link power line adapter. What it does is you plug into one side an Ethernet cable, and then it carries the signals across the power lines inside of a house, and uh, you attach another gadget on the other side, and of course it acts like uh, an Ethernet wire. Kind of helpful, actually. I had one in my house for a while. Um, I have a workshop a bit uh, distance from my home, and it was a good way to create a connection at the time. Okay, so a single circuit board inside that plastic case. Uh, there's an Ethernet uh, jack on this side of the right. On the left, uh, the board is soldered into the power connector. And you can see I've taken it off there. Um, there's a fuse on the assembly for safety reasons, but then the signals seem to go through this transformer. That makes lots of sense. 120 volts on the AC line. Uh, semiconductor is only wanting a few volts. So you've got to knock their voltage down. Uh, also, a transformer is great for a safety perspective. Um, obviously, a filter function sitting here with a lot of inductors. Uh, it'll be some sort of bandpass, I suspect. Uh, Obviously, you want the signals when you're trying to come this way, take them off the power line. You need to condition them so the uh, the receiver on the semiconductor can sense them. Uh, and of course, uh, on the other direction, if, as you drive out, you don't want to drive too much energy on the power line because then you'd fail regulatory testing. Looks like that will lead, though, into this part here. It's from a company called Broadcom. It's the BCM60321. If you uh, try to search for information on the internet, you won't find too much on it. Uh, Broadcom is a pretty hard to deal with company if you're a small uh, vendor. Uh, they only will deal with large corporations willing to sign NDAs who have significant volume. So, uh, but no matter, uh, let's uh, sort of scope the signals here and see what this chip is pushing uh, out onto the power line. So I plugged in just a single uh, power line adapter and uh, scope probe the uh, output of the A6 he was driving onto the, the power line. Uh, you can see it comes up, creates a burst, pauses, and then creates probably an information packet. This burst here is usually used for the phase lock loop or delay lock loops inside uh, a communication device to lock on and get ready for the actual uh, information transition. Uh, the um, zoom right in, you can sort of see there's a uh, varying peaks of amplitude. That's a, a basically modulation of amplitude. If you look at uh, two peak peak, it's about a 25 megahertz uh, symbol rate with these lock cursors that can come across though. And you can eventually see that there are some times when the signal actually isn't 25 megahertz. It appears to be a phase shift on one of the bits. And of course, that, that's exactly what's going on. It's uh, modulating both amplitude and phase. And that's how you pack a lot of information to the communication signaling device. Uh, this is probably QAM. Uh, so even though that's 25 megahertz here, you're actually packing uh, more bits per transition. And it's a way of uh, getting information across on a communication system without driving the frequencies higher. So lots of cleverness going on here in the actual signaling because it's uh, the power lines, of course, were never meant for carrying information. So uh, you see a lot of uh, typical uh, modulation techniques going on here uh, in this device. Okay, so we uh, took a look at the signals coming in and out of the Broadcom part. Uh, probably QPSK or QAM encoded. Um, and if we uh, take that part off the board, uh, we flip it over, you can sort of see the first um, item of interest. It's an edge bonded device with the signals on the, uh, the edges. And then in the middle, you can see a very large uh, pad, uh, probably ground, but more importantly, it's actually meant for uh, heat, re heat removal from the circuit board. Uh, gets soldered on, provides a good path for heat removal. Anyways, if you take that package off, you're going to end up with the uh, silicon die. Now we're looking top-down metal here. Uh, the amber-colored bits are the analog portions of the device. They generally don't get covered with metal power distribution because that would affect their uh, signaling. Um, some of them are fairly high speed. If we zoom into this block here, for example, uh, this almost certainly will be the phi. Uh, differential, you see sort of two structures um, coming in and out. The uh, other parts up here in the middle, um, they're basically covering up all the digital logic. Uh, you can sort of see them running in rows and columns. Those are the power distribution for those blocks. Um, and then of course you can see that there is a whole bunch of different patterns going on. And that's because almost every SOIC is a collection of uh, intellectual property brought together in a hierarchical design and placed down onto a piece of silicon. A very, very typical design uh, for um, this sort of mixed signal and uh, SOIC. So this is the back of the circuit board and uh, at the bottom here, we can see a part which has a little turquoise dot on it. That's a really good sign that something's been programmed. If we zoom in a bit, we can see the part number. 
525L800. This is a, a spy device. Basically, it holds the firmware for that Broadcom part we are looking at just a moment ago. And uh, if you take that off the board, you can get an adapter very easily off of Amazon uh, sort of overnight delivery. Um, and uh, you can actually uh, connect it and just, just plug it your computer with uh, USB. And you can uh, extract the file and uh, drop it into Linux. So I brought the file into Linux here. And uh, there's a command called uh, binwalk, which is very useful for reverse engineering uh, products. Uh, it tells me that there's probably about three different file systems in here. And if I do an entropy... Um, It'll tell me a little bit more about what what's in them, or if they're um, encrypted or not, or compressed. So you can sort of see three major systems, um, probably some data structures as well. When the entry is about one, it's almost certainly an encrypted file system. Uh, here, it's probably just simply been compressed when the entry is around 0.7. And uh, if we take a look at the strings command, it'll tell us even more about uh, what it can find. Um, it's quite funny, actually. It says that the secret password to encrypt the Giggle MIMS, um, and there actually is a string behind it. We look at it in a binary editor. Um, Giggle, however, uh, was a company purchased by Broadcom, came out of Spain. I'll just pop the wiki listing on it, uh, and you can see they purchased it uh, back in uh, the early 2000s. Um, and that's the provenance of the technology. Um, the other interesting thing is you can even tell the, uh, when the code was actually compiled because they kept that uh, string in the file. It was compiled in 2012, so about 12 years ago. Um, since then, it's pretty much become more common to sign your firmware and to heavily encrypt it, so um, these kind of secrets can't be seen. Uh, you can even see the name of the machine that they're using uh, for the actual compile, uh, Perry, um, which was uh, the command that was used to compile it. So. And there's a few other words here which sort of indicate, you know, home plug AV, which of course uh, this is uh, what it is. Um, it's always interesting when you see a ROM uh, on a part from the 2000s, 2010s, you can actually easily extract the secret sometimes. So uh, no comp the real takeaway here, though, is that there looks like about three images. So on that Broadcom chip, um, uh, we see there's some technology coming in from Giggle, from the Spanish company, and there's probably other couple of processors sitting there. Okay, well, what else can we see on the circuit board that's worthy of a comment? Uh, the power system, obviously, sort of sitting in the bottom here. Um, and there's a control I see, not too surprising, uh, probably doing all the complicated stuff. If we uh, pop over to the data sheet, the part was marked, so it's really easy to find it. It's from a company called Power Integration, Link Switch CV family, they call it. Uh, it looks like it has a transformer, which we know that's an isolated design. And then here's the link, link switch here. There's going to be a small transistor to, uh, well, not small, but there's going to be a power transistor to pull it down. And then some feedback. And uh, if we uh, just take that part out and uh, de-encapsulate it, we get this uh, integrated circuit here. Um, now, actually, it's quite a, an unusual looking power adapter, or sorry, a power supply conversion circuit. Down here is a big transistor, and of course you kind of expect that in any product. Uh, but what's interesting is over here, there's actually what looks like a lot of digital logic, fairly, fairly primitive, you know, hundreds of gates, a um, bunch of flip-flops for some reason. Uh, but it's all explained because the data sheet actually is quite good. Um, it talks about um, the block diagram, uh, and there's a state machine in it, and of course that's what we saw there with those gates. Uh, here's that transistor uh, in, in the diagram as well. Um, and uh, an interesting part, actually, fairly complicated. So uh, let's see, perhaps one chip left to the assembly worthy of interest. Uh, there's an Ethernet transceiver sitting up here, uh, also from Broadcom. So the part number on the chip was uh, the BCM5241. And uh, there actually is a small product brief uh, on the web for that one. It's a, a 10100 uh, Ethernet uh, transceiver. Um, 10100, of course, pretty slow these days in networking, but. Uh, I think when I had this uh, in service in my house, I got about 10 megabits per second, uh, which is actually kind of amazing, given that was a 1950s house. Uh, to get that speed was uh, entirely fine. Um, these kind of control chips sit between the magnetics on the one side here, and then, of course, the larger Broadcom chip over here, where it exposes the uh, typical uh, media access controller interface, and uh, a standard in the, in the books called MIII. So... Um, uh, today, if you expect to open up a more modern version, you would see, of course, all this would have been contained uh, in a single piece of silicon. Okay, well, uh, that was uh, the interesting tidbits I could find in a quick 10-minute teardown video of this assembly. Uh, if you like this format, uh, drop a comment uh, down in the comment section. If you don't like it, uh, tell me what you like to improve. I'm trying to 
hold these about 10 minutes and just sort of touch upon the interesting bits you can find inside uh, things I can find in my junk box.